Hey everyone! Welcome to the 39th episode of our Sudoku series. In this video, we'll show you how to use advanced techniques to solve a real-life Sudoku puzzle step-by-step. -step. Let's get started. Let's move to number 1. Only two positions left in the third box where value 1 can be placed. In the fifth block, the number 1 can be directly placed. Only two positions left in the seventh box where value 1 can be placed. There are no other boxes in which the value 1 has only two possible candidate cells. Let's move to number 2. Only two positions left in the second box where value 2 can be placed. Only two positions left in the fifth box where value 2 can be placed. Only two positions left in the seventh box where value 2 can be placed. Let's move to number 3. Only two positions left in the third box where value 3 can be placed. In the eighth block, the number 3 can be directly placed. Only two positions left in the seventh box where value 3 can be placed. Let's move to number 4. Only two positions left in the second box where value 4 can be placed. Only two positions left in the third box where value 4 can be placed. Only two positions left in the fourth box where value 4 can be placed. Only two positions left in the seventh box where value 4 can be placed. Let's move to number 5. Only two positions left in the first box where value 5 can be placed. In the fifth block, the number 5 can be directly placed. In the sixth block, the number 5 can be directly placed. Only two positions left in the ninth box where value 5 can be placed. Let's move to number 6. There is no cell that can be filled with number 6, and there is no box where there are only two candidate positions for number 6. Let's skip this number for now. Let's move to number 7. Only two positions left in the first box where value 7 can be placed. Only two positions left in the third box where value 7 can be placed. Only two positions left in the fifth box where value 7 can be placed. In the eighth block, the number 7 can be directly placed. Only one position left in the fifth box where value 7 can be placed. Only two positions left in the eighth box where value 6 can be placed. Only two positions left in the seventh box where value 7 can be placed. Let's move to number 8. Only two positions left in the fifth box where value 8 can be placed. Only two positions left in the eighth box where value 8 can be placed. Let's move to number 9. Only two positions left in the third box where value 9 can be placed. There is a hidden pair in the box 3. Notice how the candidates 3, 9 occur in only two cells in this. We have two candidates and only two cells where they can be placed in box 3. Therefore, all other candidates can be removed from these two cells. Only one position left in the third box where value 1 can be placed. Only two positions left in the first box where value 1 can be placed. Only two positions left in the fourth box where value 9 can be placed. In the fifth block, the number 9 can be directly placed. Only one position left in the fourth box where value 9 can be placed. Only two positions left in the fourth box where value 3 can be placed. Only two positions left in the seventh box where value 9 can be placed. Only two positions left in the ninth box where value 9 can be placed. The next solve techniques need to be based on the candidates. All candidates have been filled in, the cells marked in purple have been skipped as they already contain number pairs. There is a naked pair in row 4. We have two cells in only two possible values to be placed there. The candidates 4, 
six can be removed from all other cells in the same row. There is an intersection with another region in subgrid 6, value 6 has to be in one of the marked cells. So it cannot be in any other cell in row 5. Cell row 5 column 5 is a naked single. There is a naked pair in box 2. We have two cells in only two possible values to be placed there. The candidates 2, 6 can be removed from all other cells in the same box. There is a finned X-wing with value 5 in rows 1 and 7. Either the fish or the fin is true. The fish and the fin are marked in purple and green, respectively. It is possible to eliminate all candidates that would be eliminated by both the fish and the fin. There is a XY wing with the pivot cell row 5 column 3. This cell has two candidates, 3 and 4. One of these values has to be the correct one, but we don't know which one it is. If the actual value is 3, then the same value cannot also be in row 6 column 2. Thus the only possible value of row 6 column 2 is 6. The other possibility is that the actual value is 4. If that is the case, then that value cannot also be in row 8 column 3. Thus the only possible value of row 8 column 3 again is 6. But in any case value 6 can be removed from any cell that shares a region with both cells. There is a finned X-wing with value 8 in columns 2 and 6. Either the fish or the fin is true. The fish and the fin are marked in purple and green, respectively. It is possible to eliminate all candidates that would be eliminated by both the fish and the fin. There is an X chain consisting of three links in value 6. If 6 is not in row 4 column 1, then it has to be in row 4 column 6. If 6 is in row 4 column 6, then it cannot also be in row 9 column 6. If 6 is not in row 9 column 6, then it has to be in row 8 column 4. Therefore value 6 is either in row 4 column 1 or row 8 column 4. Value 6 can be eliminated from any cell that shares a region with both cells. There is a sashimi jellyfish with value 6 in columns 2, 4, 5, and 9. Either the fish or the fin is true. The fish and the fin are marked in purple and green, respectively. It is possible to eliminate all candidates that would be eliminated by both the fish and the fin. There is an XY chain with four links that starts at row 9 column 2. This cell has only two candidates, 3 and 8. If the value of row 9 column 2 is not 8 then it has to be 3. Thus 3 cannot also be in row 6 column 2. If the value of row 6 column 2 is not 3 then it has to be 6. Thus 6 cannot also be in row 4 column 1. If the value of row 4 column 1 is not 6 then it has to be 4. Thus 4 cannot also be in row 4 column 6. If the value of row 4 column 6 is not 4 then it has to be 6. Thus 6 cannot also be in row 9 column 6. If the value of row 9 column 6 is not 6 then it has to be 8. That is the very value that started the chain. We have now found that value 8 is either in row 9 column 2, the trivial case, or, by following the chain, in row 9 column 6. Therefore value 8 can be eliminated from any cell that shares a region with both cells. There is an intersection with another region in subgrid 9, value 8 has to be in one of the marked cells. So it cannot be in any other cell in row 7. There is an XY chain with three links that starts at row 7 column 1. This cell has only two candidates, 6 and 7. If the value of row 7 column 1 is not 6 then it has to be 7. Thus 7 cannot also be in row 7 column 2. If the value of row 7 column 2 is not 7 then it has to be 5. Thus 5 cannot also be in row 8 column 2. If the value of row 8 column 2 is not 5 then it has to be 8. Thus 8 cannot also be in row 8 column 4. If the value of row 8 column 4 is not 8 then it has to be 6. That is the very value that started the chain. 
We have now found that value 6 is either in row 7 column 1, the trivial case, or, by following the chain, in row 8 column 4. Therefore value 6 can be eliminated from any cell that shares a region with both cells. All remaining numbers can be solved using naked single technique, so there is no need to explain them one by one. This is the final result of the puzzle. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. Thanks again for tuning in and happy puzzling!